Whiskey, Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from the Glen Borgie Distillery. 20 years old, distilled 1995, bottled 2016. This is from a German independent bottler named Whiskey Square. Dick Werner, uh, he is the owner and proprietor of Whiskey Square, and this is his second independent bottling. 120 euros, so about 135, 140 dollars. Whiskey base number 92735. Now, um, this was aged for the entire 20 years in a bourbon hogshead. Now, um, Dirk is a guy I've met a few times at different whiskey fairs over here in Germany, and when I'm there, I actually come around to each and every stand or each and every booth, and I hey, ask, can I do an interview with you? Can we talk about the, the news in the whiskey world? Can we talk about new releases, what's happening, and so on? And so I've done literally hundreds of interviews in German, and uh, dozens and dozens in English, as you've probably seen. Now, this is a guy I've looked at a few times, and he was like, mm -mm. and then I actually talked talk to him. He said, oh, I'm shy, and so on. The fourth time, he was like, no, but, and we talked for a fairly long amount of time, and then the fifth time I went to him, I said, hey, one of my fans said, you have a whiskey I have to try. He says, yes, here it is, and I was like, oh, great. Can I have a sample? And he was like, ooh, I said, I would pay for it. I said, well, for 10 euros, what would I get? He said, well, okay, if you're going to pay for it. So he filled up 5CL, which was much more than the 5 euros, or 10 euros. I think a normal sample, 2CLs were going for like 8 euros. And so um, I actually had the a possibility to do the video now and in English and in German. Uh, this has been on my shelf for about eight months, so sorry, Dirk, but that's the way things work with my whiskey videos. Even though I do release in German every single day, Monday to Saturday, and Sunday is my live stream, and in English on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I still do not have enough time, enough days in the week to do all the whiskey I have. So this now belongs to the Chevis Brothers, the distillery. This is one of the workhorses. They managed to buy it, I think, around 2003, because 2004 to 5 and even into 6, they actually reinstalled um, basically everything. They revamped the entire distillery. They computerized it. They added new um, stills. And then they just started working here and pumping out the whiskey for their blends. So this is a workhorse, and this is one of the distilleries you often don't see at all unless you have the privilege of having an independent distiller or independent bottler so um 20 years old i should have poured this a moment ago <laughs> 20 minutes in the glass and 20 seconds on the tongue would be one of the things you say now this is a very very um special whiskey and yet i personally have the feeling that if you look at the career of a whiskey connoisseur you'll see they enter into the whiskey world standards. There will be the Bunahabin 12, there might actually be a Springbank 18, there will be maybe a couple other standards, and then they'll start going into either the, um, the Sherry Bomb world, um, or they will go into the Peat Heads. And then after a couple years, or a couple hundreds, or even thousands of different drams during that time, they will come back to their first true love, as they often say, to these X bourbon barrel whiskeys. Um, cast string, single cask, X bourbon hog heads, and they just love these. You can really feel the character of the distillery. You really get a impression of what this whiskey's like, and it's not masked by the sherry or the rum or Madeira or the port or anything else trying to um, falsify that taste. Now, I'm not there yet. I'm actually. The Sherry Balm, I've gone through and I've really enjoyed that. I'm starting to very slowly make my way into the peat realm. I can drink everything. I enjoy some of it even. <laughs> so I would say a good Highland Park is something I can really enjoy. And a few things are just like, well, I beg, nah, no. <laughs> so... And then one day I'll finally make it into that new camp of the people who love these and are the real whiskey connoisseurs out there. Maybe another 2,000 videos. I've already done 1,000 plus. So let's try this. 
This is a fabulous nose. Think marshmallows. Think peppermint spearmint. Think vanilla icing. Think a tiny little bit of wood and think um, of a little bit of, um, of meadow. A summer meadow with all those wild flowers. If you know what, don't know what that is, there's that um, there's the, the cough drop from Switzerland called Ricola. And Ricola has like 27 different types of herbs in there. A little bit like that. It's not that caramel. It's not that toffee. F it's, not, it's not tobacco. It's not any type of nuttiness. It's very, very light fruitiness. This is a very delicate whiskey. I imagine like a 75-year-old woman... Imagine she's in a big city and this big ugly guy tries to steal her purse and she hits him with the stick and hits him with the purse and he runs away instead of her because she's a very strict and a very, very strong, old, but very, um, very clear lady. A little bit of that's what I'm getting, but it's very delicate as well. I really like this whiskey. This is a very, very, very nice whiskey. Now, I made a mistake in my German video, and I'm going to explain what the mistake was. Um, I found a bottle of 1988 Linkwood single cask. This stuff is liquid gold. I'm going to do a video about this one day. I was comparing a A, a plus whiskey with a B minus whiskey, and it just wasn't fair. Um, oh, <laughs> that stuff is so great. Now, this is really good. It's not going to shake your world. It's not going to um, make you stop everything and call your, your mom and say, Mom, Mom, I've had a revelation. I've had an epiphany. It's not that type of whiskey. But it is a whiskey to enjoy. It is a whiskey to savor. Now, my problem is, problem, it is 55.3%. Uh, now, what I've learned is I need to take it down to about... 48, 50%. Really opens up. It gets a little bit of that sharpness from the alcohol all the way. And it really makes this um, whiskey flower blossom. So, cilantro. Doesn't change the nose much. It does weaken a little bit and puts the vanilla a little bit more in the front. Bourbon's hog's head, yeah? Mm. Very nicely done. Mm. A little bit of the mint, a little bit of pineapple, a little bit of um, apricots, a tiny little bit of cherry. Mm. Daisies? <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. Um, Mmm. Oh, and a little bit of wood towards the end, but perfectly, perfectly integrated harm, harmony. It, it, it feels like an old Hibiki 17 almost. Mmm. Mm. It's got a nice, long-lasting, light pineapple, icing, um, vanilla, woody finish. Nice. Very, very nice. Um, will you be able to find this whiskey outside of Germany? <laughs> nah. Uh, maybe in the, uh, some type of auction you'll be able to see this one day. Uh, I'm going to give this a solid B. Um, B minus. Mm, it's growing on me, so it's a solid B. Now, the 120 euro price tag for this bottle is a little bit my problem. Now, over here in Germany, we have a couple independent bottlers, and we have people that have their own whiskey shops, and we have a little bit of a, let's say we have a star cult personality in Germany. If he, Marco is his name, would have put this um, whiskey on the market for 120 euros, it would have sold out within hours. Because this guy has, in the last 15 years, um, made a name for himself. He's had literally hundreds of um, independent um, bottlings and... I think just Friday evening, um, 7 p.m., his server um, had, I think, four new bottlings, and by within 18 minutes, they were all sold out. This guy has a name, has a, has a reputation. Whiskey Square, unfortunately not yet. This whiskey could actually compete with all those other whiskeys that Marco actually um, 
um, releases, but hey, the name is what counts, doesn't it? A lot of times we trust that name. So therefore, I'm going to give it a C minus minus for value for money. Um, 80 euros, yeah. 100 euros, nah. 120 euros, I'm sorry. It's just out of my, it's not, I'm not willing to pay that. I have whiskey that costs much, much more that taste for me. Um, totally different and even better, but this is just not worth that price. Maybe one day when I'm 65, I'm just going to say, okay, now I'm going to actually um, just buy a nice little bottle and find out and just enjoy. And that would be about what I would like. But this is not yet my price category. Good. My question is, what would you be willing to pay for a 20-year-old single cast, um, bottle-proof cast strength whiskey from a distillery you normally cannot find? One of those whiskeys that are usually in the Flora and Fauna series, if it belonged to the Diageo brand, if they belong to Chevis Brothers, then we have these other independent bottlers that actually allow sometimes us to have a glimpse into that, um, into that world of that very, very nice um, spirit, I must admit. So what would be the price you would be willing to pay? I said 80 euros would be a fair price for 20-year-old single cask. What do you think? By the way, there's more and more. The 120 in Germany well, was Limburg last year, actually. That was the normal price. <sighs> Maybe I'm just old school and I'm not used to the new prices yet. Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany, tasting rare and exotic whiskey. If you want to contact me, please write an email to whiskeyjason at gmail.com or write down the comments. I will get back to you. And also, thank you very much for liking, sharing, subscribing, and telling others about my channel. All right, all the best. I publish on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Bye-bye.